Welcome to the Mountain Gorilla Veterinary Project webcast presented by the Morris Animal Foundation. My name is John Taylor. I am the Chief Operating Officer of the Morris Animal Foundation and I had the pleasure of being a part of the MAFS Summer 2008 trip to Rwanda and to see the Mountain Gorilla Veterinary Project. I will be your host and narrator as we go visit the gorillas. Morris Animal Foundation became involved with the Mountain Gorilla Veterinary Project in the mid-1980s. Diane Fossey, who was world-renowned for her dedication to the survival of the mountain gorillas, contacted Morris in 1985 for our help in saving the last few hundred or so gorillas that were left on this earth. The remaining gorillas in Central Africa were in desperate need of veterinary care due to injuries, which were due to poaching and other related illnesses. Morris accepted this very difficult challenge and established the first Mountain Gorilla Veterinary Project on behalf of the gorillas in 1986. Before this could happen, sadly, on December 26, 1985, Diane Fossey was found murdered, allegedly by poachers. Morris is proud to have been able to play a critical role in helping realize Diane Fossey's vision of protecting the health and welfare of the Mountain Gorillas. In recent years, Morris has transitioned the Mountain Gorilla Veterinary Project to another wildlife entity, the MGVP Inc., in association with the Baltimore Zoo. However, Morris continues to provide significant financial support for the effort. Today, the MGVP is led by Dr. Mike Cranfield, CEO of MGVP Inc. Dr. Cranfield is a fine, dedicated scientist and close friend and supporter of Morris Animal Foundation. Now let's talk about our most recent trip to the mountain gorillas. We traveled to the Central African country of Rwanda. High on the side of the Virunga volcano mountain range, the mountain gorillas inhabit some of the most spectacular scenery on earth. The gorillas we visited reside in the Virunga conservation area and uh, volcanoes national park. Our trek to the gorillas was in conjunction with Eco Tours, who works for the local government to maintain strict control of the volume and nature of visitors to the fragile gorilla habitat. Eco Tours also donates a portion of their revenues back to the gorillas. People going to see the gorillas is essential to their survival. In this poor country, the gorillas are an extremely important source of income for the country and are thus highly prized. The government has an incredible incentive to work to protect them, especially from the constant threat of poachers. Along with our porters, an official guide, assigned armed guards, we began our trek up to the gorillas. During our trip to Rwanda, we went to visit two gorilla groups. The jungle is dense, it's wet, it's humid, it's slippery, there are no paths. The guides and the armed guards cut through the heavy jungle with machetes as they bushwhack a path through the very, very steep terrain. It's an incredibly tough, slow walk. Our trek to the Sousa group, the second hike, was one of the toughest hikes some of our groups have ever made. But boy, was it worth it. The gorillas are all in groups. There are groups that the tourists visit and there are groups that are not visited by tourists but they're visited by the veterinarians on a regular basis and are monitored just the way the tourist groups are. The gorillas in the tourist groups are constant groups, they're the same groups, but they're habituated to humans and so they are very, very safe to visit. You are only allowed one hour with the gorillas. You're supposed to stay 20 feet away from these magnificent noble creatures, but sometimes they have other ideas. Twice during our trip to the Sousa group, one of the gorillas, a huge silverback, who was just sitting there eating some vegetation, just suddenly started walking towards us. He lunged out, reached out, and grabbed a, a member of our party. Two different people uh, at two different times. It was just amazing. Everybody was laughing and high-fiving. It was an amazing, exciting uh, part of our trip. The two guys that were hugged by gorillas, 
they thought it was worth the cost of the trip just for that. Once you come in contact with the gorillas, it's like entering another world. These guys, they're just like big families. There are huge silverbacks. There are some mothers, females, taking care of their young ones. The young ones range in, in age from very, very young. There was one six month old up to uh, uh, two or three year old juveniles. You get in amongst these guys and it's just like being part of their family. They are walking around you. They are sitting close to you. They are looking at you. It's really just an unbelievable experience. Their mobility in the terrain is just amazing. If we try to outrun them, it would, it would be hands down, no race. They are so habituated to humans though, they are visited every day, that there is absolutely no danger, even given the fact that um, the one silverback did, did um, attack us or, or sort of um, lunged at us, there really was never any, any fear um, and uh, there are always the trackers and the guides around just in case. But being part of those gorillas for just an hour was just one of the most amazing experiences of my life and anybody who uh, loves primates and can do this should do this. This is just amazing. It helps the gorillas, it helps Rwanda, it helps Uganda and the Democratic Republic of the Congo where there are also gorillas. It is just doing the right thing. Apart from being on the side of the volcanoes with the gorillas, we also visited the orphanage. These are um, a dozen or so gorillas, um, some are mountain gorillas, some are lowland gorillas that are being cared for by the Mountain Gorilla Veterinary Project but they've lost their parents due to poaching or injury. Before we return to the mountains for a final visit with the gorillas, let us introduce the talented and dedicated veterinarians watching over their health. Dr. Mike Cranfield, Dr. Lucy Spellman, Dr. Magdalena lukasik Brown, and Dr. Jean Felix Kinani. In addition, one of our wonderful loyal math donors, Anne Moore from New York City, was part of the math team on the trip. Anne is a cat person, but now she's also a gorilla person. Morris is gratified to see that our commitment of over 20 years ago to Diane Fossey and her beloved gorillas lives on today. We are delighted that their numbers are increasing. Brought back from the brink of extinction by caring, loving humans, including math donors. These spectacular, gentle creatures enrich our planet and each of our lives. Congratulations to Mountain Gorilla Veterinary Project Inc. and Dr. Cranfield and the MGVP vets. Being here with the gorillas makes it perfectly clear why we work for and support Morris Animal Foundation. It also makes us proud of our donors. You should be proud. Give yourself a hand. And in closing, let's thank the gorillas. We love you guys. Tell them that you love them. Support the Morris Animal Foundation. The bond lasts forever. For more information, please visit us online at morrisanimalfoundation.org or by calling 1-800-243-2345.